I love you. I know. I love you too. But, but I'm your sister, it's wrong. Yes, but... Well, you're happy when George Lucas did it. Welcome to a Valentine's Day edition of Geek Lunch Meat. Hello, welcome back to this love-filled Valentine's Day episode of Geek Lunch Meat. I'm your host Chris and uh, I'm full of love for all of you who tuned in last week and have watched the video. Uh, it's about 150 views on YouTube now, uh, which may not sound a lot to some, but that's about 145 more views than I was expecting. Uh, so that's fantastic. Thanks all very much for watching. We'll start off with this week's news. It was looking to be quite a slow news week and then Gina Carano went and self-destructed her career quite spectacularly. So uh, we'll lead with that. Uh, Gina as you probably know, played Cara Dune in the Mandalorian TV show on Disney+. Plus. She's always been slightly problematic for Disney because she is very right wing, a Trump supporter. She puts a lot of stuff up on social media, which I imagine is going to rile uh, the big wigs at Disney. So they may have been looking for an excuse to get rid of her. Uh, and this week she handed them a big one. I think it was Wednesday, Wednesday night on her Instagram page. I thought, blimey, she's absolutely doubled down on the craziness. Loads of posts about anti-vax, anti-masks, just saying, you know, just Covid will effectively a lot of rubbish and everything should just reopen back up. Uh, and then lo and behold, uh, the very next day, Lucasfilm released a statement basically saying she no longer works for us and we have no intention of hiring her any time in the future. Apparently she also posted uh, basically equating being a Trump supporter similar to being um, a Jew during the Holocaust. Which is never going to go down well. Uh, and uh, I mean, Disney and Lucasfilm had no choice at all uh, but to let her go. Now, what, what does that mean going forward? I mean, for The Mandalorian, I don't think it's going to be too bad. She was a bit part. It's rumoured that season three of The Mandalorian may be jumping forward a bit in time any rate. Uh, so I suspect it won't affect that. They haven't even they haven't started filming yet. I think that starts filming in the spring. So that's probably not too bad. Now, the Rangers of the New Republic show, uh, which is also up and coming, it hasn't been announced that she was going to lead it, but it seemed the last season of The Mandalorian seemed very much that they were going that way. Kara had become... Uh, part of the New Republic and it did look like it was grooming her probably to be if not the lead one of the main stars of that show so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that um, I'm not entirely sure what's going to go on there it, so it may, she may not have had a big part in it I suspect it looked it did look suspiciously that way so um, yeah we want to, uh, want to keep an eye on I think it might have to um, be a bit of retooling on that show um, I imagine it will go ahead uh, they've announced it I can't see that Disney would scrap the entire thing but um, who knows maybe we'll, we'll keep an eye on that one uh, in other news, it was the uh, Super Bowl last uh, weekend, which I believe is some sort of sports event, or the Superb Owl, if you watch what we do in the shadows. And if you're not watching what we do in the shadows, you should absolutely be watching it, because it's absolutely hilarious. It's brilliant. Now, the best part of the Super Bowl, if you're not a sports fan, are the movie trailers. Uh, all, all the big studios usually put big trailers for the up-and-coming releases. Now, this year was really disappointing. Hardly anything at all. It, it's probably not surprising, as in a lot of the movies that were advertised on the last Super Bowl, we haven't still haven't actually even got yet. Uh, things like Black Widow, uh, Fast and Furious 9, all those sorts of films, all still delayed. Disney have just said this week that they are still looking at a cinema release for Black Widow, which I think is in May. I don't know. It still seems like possibly some of the cinemas might have started reopening uh, here in the UK. Uh, vaccinations going well according to the government but um, yeah we'll see on that one and in America a lot of cinemas still aren't open so I don't know uh, it, it's such a big film I don't know if they would drop it to Disney plus uh, charging the premium rate I think there's a I mean, it's potentially a billion dollar movie if it opened here in this in theaters so um, yeah interesting on that one yeah we this the trailers we did get Falcon and Winter Soldier we got a new trailer uh, for the new TV show there um, as befitting a Valentine episode, a lot of bromance going on between uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. And to be honest, that I mean, a show like this is going to live or die on the uh, camaraderie uh, between its two main uh, protagonists. And it looks great. I mean, there was we start we saw some of that in uh, Captain America: Civil War in the uh, airport sequence. And yeah, it looks it looks it looks very much like what you would have expected Marvel to lead with. Um, in the TV shows and uh, like I said last time it should have been out last summer 
uh, but obviously due to the pandemic, it did not. And it definitely looks it looks like a sort of you know straight follow on from Endgame, um, a lot of action, and you can see that yeah Marvel would have led with that instead. Obviously, circumstances mean that's a lead with the slightly uh, stranger Wonder Vision, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, but uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier uh, definitely looks more the sort of standard Marvel fare um, that we've come to expect. That is March the 19th that hits a Disney Plus. So, so according to my calculations, one division will finish, then there'll be a, a week as rest, and then Falcon and Winter Soldier starts uh, the week after. So they're really starting to pack them in. I assume it probably won't be long after that till we'll get the Loki show. Um, possibly, I wonder if they will fit the, uh, the What If animated show in after Falcon and Winter Soldier. The only other trailer that was really of any interest was the uh, Raya and the Last Dragon, which is the latest uh, animated movie from Disney. Now that is going straight to Disney Plus on March the 5th in a similar vein to the Mulan live action. That will be, if you've got a Disney Plus subscription, you'll have to pay extra, probably roughly about 20 quid to watch it. And then about three months after its release, it will then just go straight to uh, Disney Plus so anyone with a Disney Plus subscription can watch it on there. Uh, but yeah, that was it for the Super Bowl trailers this year. As I understand one of the circumstances, but um, yeah, there wasn't a lot to report there. More small screen news uh, this week. Uh, the Last of Us, the adaptation of the uh, Naughty Dog video game, has cast its two leads. Pedro Pascal, uh, obviously hot off The Mandalorian, is going to be playing Joel, and Bella Ramsey will be taking on the role of Ellie. Um, which is fantastic news. Bella was Lady Mormont in Game of Thrones, um, which absolutely nailed it in that. Uh, so that's a really fantastic. Those of you that don't know, Last of Us follows. It's post-apocalyptic, sort of post-pandemic America. Uh, a disease has wiped out a lot of the population and turned. It's like a. It's not zombies, but they sort of they sort of are zombies because it's to do with a fungus that infects people. Um, very much like if you've seen um, the pictures of ants that have got fungus growing out of their heads. It's a, it's a real life thing. Uh, it's quite it's quite bizarre that uh, the, the fungus controls the ants and makes it do its bidding. This is very similar. The fungus gets in people and then they've got strange fungal growths coming out of their heads. And it's all very scary. Uh, some of them make this clicking noise to communicate. Or, uh, um, all very creepy. Uh, this brilliant game and the show uh, has, the, yeah, has the potential uh to be excellent so um and yeah pedro pascal is excellent i can see that working um, really well as i say bella ramsey absolutely fantastic so yeah happy with the happy with the casting of that so we'll work uh, we'll see how that progresses and next week on netflix next friday on the 19th uh kermit here and his pals the entire all five seasons of the original muppet show 120 episodes all of it is coming to disney plus uh which is fantastic if you don't like the muppets you're probably dead inside. Um, I don't know what to say. Um, they are absolutely fantastic, bring a lot of joy, and uh, yeah, can't wait for that. So we'll be dipping into those. Uh, obviously, all the different special guests. I know the Star Wars episode is excellent with Mark Hamill. The original Wonder Woman, Linda Carter, is an episode. Vincent Price, just yeah, so many special guests. Um, can't wait for that one. Uh, also, on that same day, on the 19th, Tribes of Europa hits Netflix. Now, Last episode, I mentioned Dark as being one of my favourite shows uh, for a long time, a uh, German show. This is the same the uh, same producers, and it is set in the year uh, 2074. There's been a global disaster. All of Europe is fractured and fighting amongst themselves. Sounds familiar. Um, and yeah, that the trailer looks really good. The trailer dropped last week as well. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely one to watch. It's got looks like definitely it's got some of the cast from the Dark in it. Uh, and that looks uh, that looks fantastic. So we'll be uh, watching that one. Netflix also revealed this week that the new cooking show for children, Waffles and Mochi, uh, will be starting on the 16th of March, starring uh, Michelle Obama and a bunch of um, puppets, which is fantastic. Uh, I know it's aimed at kids, but I can absolutely guarantee you I will be tuning in to watch that. I, uh, it looks very Muppet based. I like cooking shows. Um, love me Shia Obama, so what's not to like there? Um, so yeah, we'll be giving that a view, definitely. I uh, recommend that one. A couple of short views on things I've seen this week. We'll start with Greenland, which is the new Gerard Butler starring disaster movie that uh, landed on Amazon Prime last Friday. It's nothing we haven't seen before story-wise. Basically, a giant comet is going to hit the Earth in a few days um, and cause an extinction-level event. 
We've seen it all before, Deep Impact and Armageddon spring to mind straight away, but Greenland goes for something a bit different. There are a couple of big special effects scenes where you do see fragments of the comet hit the earth, big explosions, but it's not, um, it's not really that. It's much more sort of a gritty, uh, realistic approach. What would really happen if the world was going to end in two days' time and Gerard Butler um, and his wife, played by uh, Marina Baccarin, and their son uh, have been told they need to get to a shelter. Um, only a special few have been invited. So they have to travel across the country um, saying, try and, try and get to this shelter. It's Gerard Butler. It plays Gerard Butler, as he always does. Uh, he's quite solid and reliable. There isn't much more to it than that. It's, uh, it is, it's, it's well worth a watch if you've got Amazon Prime. There's a good supporting cast, including Scott Glenn. I say it's it's quite tense. Um, obviously, the whole world they won't they get there in time. If they do get there, is the shelter actually going to provide um, any safety for them? Yeah, well worth a watch. If, um, just don't expect that sort of big, huge uh, blockbuster sort of scope that we've seen in uh, in similar movies. Also, last Friday on Netflix, uh, Space Sweepers dropped. That is a Korean science fiction film. Uh, a couple of things I wrote down immediately after watching it. Gardens of the Galaxy, District 9, Elysium, Firefly, Wally. -E. It's quite derivative. It's like all of these elements you can see parts of, but it is fun. Um, it, it, it is Korean, uh, obviously it's subtitled, but there is a lot of English uh, in it as well. Uh, Richard Armitage, who you may remember played Thor and Oakenshield in the Hobbit movies, um, he's sort of the main antagonist. Obviously all of his lines are in English, all the people he sort of talks to are in English. There's a French guy, and so obviously all of his dialogues in French. Uh, there are some English people who've got really thick accents, so they do subtitle them even though they are talking English, which is actually really helpful. Um, so yeah, uh, don't be put off. If, if you don't really like subtitled, I mean, there is a dub on there. I didn't watch it with a dub, so I can't uh, say exactly uh, how good they are. Some, uh, they usually tend um, not to be the best. So I would always recommend watching uh, movies in the language they were originally recorded in uh, with the subtitles, if possible. Basically, in the future, the Earth uh, has gone to ruin. Really rich people are living up in uh, space stations. Uh, there's a lot of debris floating around in space, hence the space sweepers. Space sweepers are sort of garbage trucks uh, uh, of space, really, and they go around um, picking up scrap and salvage and uh, selling it. Um, there's an excellent robot in there called Bubs, as part of the crew, who flies around through space uh, with a harpoon, uh, collecting all the uh, all, all the junk and bringing it aboard. Um, yeah, it's. It's, it clocks in about two and a quarter hours. I'd say it's, it's over long. Uh, they could probably have lost about half an hour from it easily. Some of the sort of subplots uh, stretch a bit thin. Um, some of the acting is not the greatest, but um, yeah, special effects wise, it's fantastic. Um, it's really good fun. Um, I recommend if you're a science fiction fan, uh, Space Sweepers. Uh, certainly a uh, lot of good stuff coming out of uh, South Korea at the moment. And that's uh, certainly on par with uh, anything uh, that Hollywood are currently giving us. The last time out that we would take a look at WandaVision. Uh, don't worry, not going to spoil the episode uh, that dropped this week. Um, we're going to go back to last week's episode, which had a really interesting uh, twist at the end. Uh, basically, knock on the door, Wanda opens the door. Who is it? It's her brother, Pietro, also known as Quicksilver. Um, obviously, he. We, last time we saw him, he died uh, back in Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, obviously, he's back. Uh, Wanda was surprised, so obviously it's not something that she's doing. But even more surprising um, is the fact that it wasn't Aaron uh, Taylor Johnson playing him, who who had previously played him um, in in Age of Ultron. Um, it's uh, Evan Peters who played the same character, but in the 20th Century Fox X Men movies. Now, obviously Disney now own Fox, so they can use him, um, and it just opens up a whole range of possibilities um, going forward uh, for the MCU. Now, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about rumours about whether the old Spider-Man will be appearing in the next Spider-Man movie. Uh, Tobey Maguire, um, Andrew Garfield. Uh, there was rumoured that um, Alfred Molina will be back as Doc Ock. Um, and even um, is it Jamie Foxx as uh, Electro would be showing up as well. And obviously, the next Doctor Strange movie is the Multiverse of Madness. Now, they, all, they already introduced the idea of a multiverse in the last Spider-Man movie, where Mysterio originally said he was from um, a different version of Earth. Now, obviously, that turned out uh, not to be true, but they did actually sort of tease the idea. 
Is it? And everyone's, everyone's sort of looking at possibly Spider-Man being the first time we're going to actually see this. And then lo and behold, Marvel suddenly drop um, Quicksilver uh, in, in, into WandaVision. And um, yeah, it's um, it, it could turn out to be nothing. It could turn out to be something completely different. But it, they are definitely uh, the whole idea of the multiverse. Um, the fact that we could see characters, um, I mean, technically, you could see Hugh Jackman turn up as Wolverine. Um, basically, any of the other uh, Marvel films that weren't made by uh, the Marvel Studios themselves um, sort of seemed to be fair game. I mean, there's been rumour that Charlie Cox might turn up as Daredevil uh, from the Netflix show, uh, that he might um, possibly turn up in, uh, I think that was Spider Man, possibly rumoured. Again, who knows? Yeah, lots of interesting stuff there. So, I mean, that, that could go any number of ways. Uh, also really interesting in the last episode of One Vision, I thought, was Monica Rambeau, who you'll recall was in uh, the original Captain Marvel movie as a little girl. This is obviously set uh, years later and she's grown up. She says she knows a aerospace engineer who she's going to contact uh, for help. Um, you see her text something on her phone and you think uh, it, it sort of starts to be, well, who, who's, you know, it, they make a specific point of it, but they don't actually tell you which makes you wonder who it could be. There are several people in uh, in the MCU that it could be. Hank Pym uh, from Ant-Man, obviously uh, he's a really smart scientist. Professor Hulk uh, it could be. Um, wouldn't surprise me if they uh, got Mark Ruffalo in to do a cameo. I mean, it could even be Reed Richards from Fantastic Four. He, he fits the bill and, and you look at the whole of, um, uh, of the organisation S.W.O.R.D., and the things that they're doing, and you could sort of see that fitting into maybe the in a way of introducing the Fantastic Four um, I I into that scenario. Uh, on one hand, you could say, well, yes, that's a major character, and to introduce him in a TV show, um, you know, that, that, that doesn't seem to gel. But um, with what Marvel's doing at the moment, um, it honestly wouldn't surprise me at all. I could easily see them just suddenly Loki dropping, um, say, Reed Richards straight into WandaVision. So, um, yeah, that's uh, uh, something else definitely to keep an eye on uh, in the next episodes. Um, if we do see in Reed Richards, um, I think that'd be an excellent way of bringing him, if it's John Krasinski, um, as as most of the internet rumours, um, people want him for it. Um, yeah, I'd absolutely love that. I think he's great. I think bringing his real uh, wife, Emily Blunt, as, um, as Sue as well. Um, yeah, I'm all for that. So, um, yeah, hopefully they go that way. So that's about it for this week. Well, I'll be back next week with more news and reviews. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope your Valentine's Day is good. Hug your loved ones. Stay safe. Until next time, eat geek and be merry. And we got through the whole of this episode without talking about my t-shirt.